I think it's hilarious and uh, just perfect that there's a giant uh, a dinosaur head next to you and you didn't mention it once during this conversation. Yeah, so, yeah, because <laughs> so, I, yeah. I thought we'd get a, well, I mean, giant, he's an absolute diddy one. Um, yeah, so this is Protoceratops Andrew's eye, and I've done loads of work on Protoceratops. It's from Mongolia. Yeah. This is a latest size juvenile. So I've, I've got a big head, and the big head's kind of like this, but I really couldn't fit it in the bag. So this is two scale. This is uh, this juvenile. is a cast. So this is not this is not a this is not original, but someone has molded and copied it. So it's not even it's not carved. It's a it's a it's a cast and, and a mold taken. So yeah, this is a hundred percent accurate to the original specimen, or at least extraordinarily accurate to the original specimen. So it's a young guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean at full size, it's gonna be like pig or sheep size. So big but not massive um but i've got it partly because it's affordable because i can't afford to buy the big skeletons and skulls um but i've done a huge amount of work on it and in part it goes back to those earlier conversations about populations and if you really want to understand animals you need an understanding of what a real population and a growth of what these animals looks like and protoceratops is I would argue probably the only dinosaur where we can really do that, or at least as close as possible as you could get to any modern animal as an analog. We've got well over a hundred good skeletons, though not probably only about 70 or 80 in really accessible museums. That's still a hell of a lot. We have everything from here's a tiny baby one. This is a really not cheap and nasty 3D print I had made, um, but that's a hatchling sized one or not much bigger than a hatchling sized one all the way up to the big adults. We've now got embryos as well, which we didn't have um, until about 10 years ago. So we've got embryonic animals all the way up to big adults. They're all pretty much from one place in um, Mongolia. And they are, as far as we can tell, from a relatively narrow window in time, only about 100,000 years, which in the grand scheme of things is very close. So you've got one population from one place from one time with 100 animals from embryos up to big adults. So now if you want to look at, as I do, something like sexual selection and when does growth of the signal kick in and at what size and what evidence for dimorphism, well, suddenly you've got a population. You've got something you can work with. And that's why Proceratops is so important. And I think way more important than even a lot of my fellow paleontologists realize. And I genuinely think we should be pouring a lot more research into them because they can tell us stuff that pretty much no other dinosaur can. Because you have the population data. So you can, yeah. you can ask a lot more And we more can questions. treat it as a population. So going way, way back to a conversation about telling males and females apart. And I said, big problem is population data, or at least the number of specimens that you have when mostly you've only got one, two or three. Um, I did a big study on this a few years ago on garials, the really long-snouted crocodilians from Nepal and India and Pakistan with a giant bulge on the end of the nose. And even though the males are all bigger than the females, and the males all have this weird nose growth, though uh, that's mostly soft tissue, but they have a weird depression in the jaw, in the, in the end of the snout uh, where the nostrils sit. We got a sample size of something like about 110 animals. So these are very, very rare animals. So we had to ransack every museum worldwide. I was sending my students, sending emails to huge numbers of people. Have you got one sitting in your collection lost? Can you get it for us? Can you take these photos or these measurements? We can measure it. We put the data set together. And then we found that actually, apart from the very biggest males, it's really hard to tell males and females apart. And this actually really closely matched um, some modeling data that I'd done with a colleague, Jordan Mallon in Ottawa, um, looking at this for alligators and, and trying to compare it to, to dinosaurs. Because though we talked about mutual sexual selection before, um, mutual sexual selection in particular, you tend to get things that are extremely similar. Males and females are very hard to tell apart. But there's also... It, there's a gradient, you know, all the way up to things like peacocks, all the way down to you can't tell them apart like parrots. And for some features, when they take time to get growing, or because dinosaurs grow over a very long window and are sexually mature over a very long window, you run into the problem that a big female will look like a small male mm -hmm. and we can't sex them. And lo and behold, this is what you get with the garials. The really big males are obvious because they're so much bigger and they've got this big depression in the, in the snout. But medium-sized and big females look like medium-sized or smaller males and very small males. 
And so, yeah, that's basically what we have with dinosaurs. Even with Protoceratops, where we've got a data set of like 100, papers have come out saying there's very mild sexual dimorphism or there isn't sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism could be very strong in Protoceratops, but we can't find it because we can't tell the males from the females because we haven't ID'd enough through something like medullary bone. And so you're in this horrible situation where, because going back to the T-Rex thing, is like, well, maybe it's mutual sexual selection and therefore they're cooperating and that would be cool. But also, maybe males are much bigger, but we can't tell because our data set's too small. Oh, that's In which case, they're not under mutual sexual selection and we've got it all wrong. Ah, it's yeah. maddening because yeah. it's so... If these were living animals, you'd just watch them or you just genotype them or you sex them and you just know and and we just don't but on the other hand we do have the mechanism to do it there are a handful of places where you get a bunch of protoceratops together where it's a mass mortality site well let's go and drill every bone because if that's the breeding season we might find seven or eight females and then the others are pretty much by default males if we know it's the middle of the breeding season because all the others have medullary bone and now you know where your male female split is mm. now let's analyze those two data sets and then maybe we'll see a difference and maybe we won't. Yeah, I love how that, that frustration is sort of a catalyst for figuring out you're like searching for a place, a piece of evidence that just shows you clearly. There are ways in. Yeah, this, there's this, ways in. This, this is always the ways thing. In. Yeah, there, there, are, there are ways in. And maybe we've got to get lucky because maybe it's not the breeding season or maybe that was just happened to be a group of all males and therefore we're, we're not going to get the signal we're looking for. But there's enough of them and they're common enough. And yet, still digging in Mongolia, we keep finding new species, we keep finding new cooler stuff. But I'm like, can we, can we dig up some more Protoceratops? Because actually, however cool these new things are, genuinely, if you want to know what dinosaurs are and how they worked, another hundred Protoceratops will actually probably tell us a lot more than 50 new species, however cool 50 new species might be. Paleontology is an incredible discipline. It really is Sherlock Holmes territory. So uh, this was an incredible conversation. I'm really grateful for all the work you write that you put out there. The, uh, uh, the podcast is incredible. I just thank you. Thank you for being you and thank you for talking today. Well, thank you very much for having me. I, I hope I haven't worn out my welcome with no. dinosaur oh, stories. We'll talk for many more hours. Thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you. you.